Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. What I've got here is my Glock Model 20 10 millimeter. It's a, it's a Gen 2 Glock that I ended up upgrading the frame to a Gen 3. I bought this brand new in 1992. This story is a story that I never really felt the need to share, but with recent events, I think it's time. If you're like me, if you own guns, you probably have felt that even some of your family or friends are vilifying you because you own firearms. And we're certainly at a crisis moment for the Second Amendment. And it doesn't matter which side of the argument you're on when you're watching this video. What I'm going to tell you is my personal story that happened. Everything is real. And I used this pistol to defend myself against an armed attacker. So we're going back 20 years. It was the Tuesday before Thanksgiving in 1992. And a friend of mine needed to get something from a convenience store. So I drove her to the convenience store in my 1991 Nissan Pathfinder, which is what I'm trying to simulate with these two seats. Because it's a pretty small vehicle and the seats were pretty close. She went off into the convenience store to get her items. And I was sitting in an extremely well-lit, very busy parking lot. You'd think it would be pretty safe. It didn't take long for somebody to start rapping on the passenger window. And he was banging and he was pointing at the door and saying, open up. And of course, I'm thinking, this guy is up to no good. He's not just like, hey, can you help me for directions kind of thing. He's like, open up the truck. And so at that point, I had my hand on my pistol. The next thing I know, he's getting in the truck to sit down as I'm leveling my pistol at his head. He gets in the car and he's staring at the stick shift with my pistol pointed at his head. And I'm telling him to get the blank out. Get the blank out. He reaches in and pulls out a pistol about this far, at which point he sees this, that my G20 is pointing right at his head. Starts screaming like a girl, okay man, okay man, don't shoot. Gets out, runs away. So I'm on this side with my gun pointing at his head kind of leaning away when I see that he's pulling a gun out of his coat and that's, that's that moment where you're like everything congeals it's like real I've got to shoot this guy and so I'm pulling the trigger and the gun's not going off and meanwhile he's like dumping out and running off and the whole time I'm pulling the trigger my finger was right there on the frame and I was really just pushing the side of the frame now before you start typing you should have done this or I would have done that Know that I've had 20 years to think about this. I've had 20 years to talk to people who have been there and done that. And what I find comical, like I like literally laugh about it, is the difference in reaction that I get between people who have never been threatened with a weapon in their lives and people who have been there and done that. The people who have been never threatened with a weapon in their lives, some of them will say, oh, I would have never let anybody get away with pulling a gun on me. That guy would have been so shot. The people who have been there and done that, on the other hand, will say a variation of, you were prepared with the gun and you used it to save your life. You did all right. That's the way that crap goes down. It's never going to be perfect. You could have done some things better, but you're alive. There's no mention of, well, too bad the other guy's not dead. They're focused in the right place, which is like, you know, I'm here to do this video. Not that there, that guy got off and he's out doing bad stuff still to this day. Who knows? So before other people beat me up about it, I've had plenty of time to beat myself up about it. Understand the reality is, if I actually would have shot him, my life probably would have taken a rapid turn for the worse. So in the end, there's part of me that feels pretty lucky that it happened the way it did. But I also realize the sheer luck that I experienced that day. And if you watch carefully to what just happened, I think the biggest source of luck that I had, I got the left-handed criminal, the left-handed guy who was going to carjack somebody at gunpoint. Because he never got the gun around to me. He would have had to turn himself all the way around like this to use his left hand to shoot me. And that certainly bought me a huge cushion of safety. Of course, the police were called and they went looking for the guy. But long story short, even though there's a record of what happened, there's no database somewhere that has that recorded as a win for uh, an armed civilian. There's, there's no place that keeps track of that. The irony is if I would have shot him, there probably would be a record. But because nobody was shot, that didn't rise to the level that it's going to get tracked as far as something that happened because there was a gun. But there are countless uh, situations, like the one I shared with you, where an armed civilian defends him or herself from life-threatening criminals. And because nobody actually gets shot, nobody's keeping a record of it. We just don't know. We can't balance that out with the gun homicide statistics.
So we're, we're left with doing surveys of gun owners, and a uh, recent University of Florida study estimated that two and a half million times every year, a law-abiding citizen stops a crime with a firearm. But we can't go to police records and say, here's a win for the good guys. We can't look at UN statistics and say, here's how many people used a legal firearm to defend their lives. It just doesn't exist there. Now, there are a couple aspects of what I experienced that have changed my training. First of all, understand that in 1992, there wasn't all this cool high-speed, low-drag training available to civilians. That's like post-September 11th kind of stuff. So my training was your basic NRA pistol safety training, you know, very square range, shooting at paper targets. Sometimes we'd go out to the coal mines and, and shoot random stuff. But I've learned that I've got to program the muscle memory from going from the frame to the trigger, frame to the trigger, and taking up the slack in a Glock. And of course, there are the obvious lessons, like I was sitting there in a car that was running with the seatbelt on and the doors unlocked. And I, I shouldn't have been. Things like that, my situational awareness has changed. I, I won't be making those mistakes again. So know this, that if you don't have a gun to protect yourself, you wouldn't have been able to do anything in that situation. If you do carry a gun to protect yourself, it's not going to do the job by itself. Get the best training that you can and don't make assumptions about what things are going to be like in that moment of crisis. So I don't know how helpful this video is going to be to you if you're, if you're a gun owner, if you carry a, a firearm for self-defense. I don't know how much this is going to influence you if you're not a gun owner and you're interested in placing an increased limit on civilian gun ownership, banning firearms like this Glock Model 20 pistol. But I do have a series of videos I call the Second Amendment Minute. Each one covers one of the issues people commonly debate about the Second Amendment. I do it with a historical perspective and I support it with statistics when it's appropriate. So click here if you want to see those videos. Know that most of the time I'm making really fun videos. It's just now is the time I need to be doing some of this serious stuff because I've got to do more to support the Second Amendment than just be a good example of responsible gun ownership. So to catch my other fun videos, check out my channel or subscribe so you can see my next videos on bows and guns and other cool things. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang and I hope to see you next time.